This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Here in the UK, the HS2 rail project isn't exactly looked upon favourably. It's massively over budget, some of its key lines have been unceremoniously cancelled, and this week there have been hints that the Prime Minister may well decide to scrap it entirely. So in this video we're going to have a look at a brief history of HS2, where things stand now, whether Sunak will scrap it, and whether this would be a politically prudent decision to make. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's start with a brief history of the project. Following the successful HS1 project that linked London and the Channel Tunnel in 2003, six years later the Department for Transport proposed that another high-speed line should be developed. Under the new Tory Lib Dem government in 2012, the specific route was decided upon. This new rail line would connect London to Birmingham with branches in Leeds and Manchester. It was expected that full operation of the line would be ready by 2033. The rationale behind it isn't actually what you might first expect. Yes, it is true that another high-speed rail line in the UK will reduce journey times. However, its main purpose is to free up capacity on existing lines. Right now, the express trains that connect the north and south of the UK run on exactly the same Victorian-era lines as the commuter trains. This means that there needs to be big gaps between these trains, otherwise the express trains catch up to the commuter trains. This is where HS2 comes in. The express trains can be moved over onto the HS2 lines, and the commuter trains can run on the old lines. In essence then, there can be both more express trains and more commuter trains. This in itself is an admirable aim. So why has it become such a disaster? Well firstly, there are the financials. Back in 2010, the expected cost of the project was only £32 billion. This increased to £42 billion by 2013, then £50 billion by 2014, and £56 billion by 2015. By 2019, the expected cost had risen all the way up to between £65 billion and £88 billion. This rise in the expected cost of the project overall can be, at least in part, attributed to the approach to risk by the government. They wanted the project to be essentially zero risk. One way they achieved this was by including a clause which meant that all contractors would have to cover 60% of any costs above the figure they mentioned when bidding for the contract. This meant that any contractor involved in the project came up with zero risk plans. And as is well established, making any plan zero risk, rather than just low risk, makes the plan itself much more expensive. Not only this, but this also contributed to the huge delays associated with the project. Back in 2020, it was suggested that the project may only be completed in 2036 at the earliest and 2040 at the latest. So it's understandable why the project has got a reputation as a bit of a disaster. The question now is what to do with it. So far, the government's approach has been to simply cancel parts of HS2 in order to save on costs. The government has already cancelled, back in 2021, the Leeds leg of the project in an effort to cut costs. And last week, the Sunday newspapers began speculating that Sunak may be about to do the exact same thing to the Birmingham to Manchester leg. So let's have a quick look through whether this actually would be a politically sound decision to make. Now, the most obvious people that would be upset by the decision to cancel this part of HS2 are those in Manchester. In fact, on hearing of the plan to scrap this leg of HS2, the Mayor of Manchester, Andy Burnham, said that it would cause a north-south chasm. He also urged the government to discuss their plans of HS2 with northern leaders before making any decisions. While Northern leaders are, understandably, frustrated with the potential plans to scrap the Manchester leg, they're actually not the only ones. Sir John Armit of the National Infrastructure Commission said that cancelling another leg of the HS2 project would show the world that the UK runs away when it starts to see some challenges. He went on to say that what we have to do here is get a grip of the costs. There are massive benefits to the economy by continuing. The whole point of HS2 was to connect the North and the South via an increase in both express and commuter trains. Connecting London to Birmingham is still useful, but will that be worth the potentially near £100 billion price tag? 
This is indeed the question Rishi Sunak's government is asking themselves. It's worth remembering that the UK is still in the midst of a cost of living crisis, and many people are still struggling with persistent high inflation. For the Tories, this has meant that their economic credibility has been all but destroyed, with YouGov reporting that the public actually think that the Labour Party would be better at handling the economy right now. Economic competence is something that the Tories traditionally do well on, and it's the thing that usually wins them elections. Sunak is probably feeling the heat of not only being upwards of 20 points behind in the polls, but also no longer being trusted on the economy. Sunak may well be pondering whether cancelling part of HS2, a project that already has a reputation of being massively over budget and behind schedule, could signal to the electorate that he's taking the economy seriously and that he's willing to do what it takes to get the economy back on track. And to be fair, there is some limited evidence that the public may be receptive to this argument. According to YouGov, 36% of the population oppose HS2, compared to the only 26% who claim they support it. Perhaps cancelling it then wouldn't actually provoke all that much backlash. However, the flip side of this is that cancelling it could add to the image of the Tories as a party without any clear vision for the future, a party dedicated to making short-term decisions to try and cling to power no matter what the cost. It's been speculated that Sunak could cancel the Birmingham to Manchester leg of HS2 as soon as Sunday at the Tory party conference. If this does happen, then the announcement will come soon after his big announcement on Net Zero, another policy that's been criticised as being short-sighted. So, to summarise, it's likely that Sunak will scrap the Manchester leg of HS2 in an attempt to save costs and demonstrate that he's serious about fixing the economy. However, there is a good chance that this could backfire and feed into the perception of the Tories as a party on the verge of losing power and willing to do anything to cling to it. Things are expected to change with a story like this, so make sure you stay on top of updates. That way you know what's going on, and let's be honest, it always feels great to stay on top of things. Even within TLDR, a few of us have been brushing up our InDesign skills in order to create the newspaper we're currently working on. It turns out that making a professional-looking newspaper is pretty difficult, so we headed to Skillshare to take their course on the topic. Unlike when I tried to learn InDesign for another never-released project a few years ago, this time I was guided through the process quickly and effectively, and this time the project will actually see the light of day thanks to Skillshare's incredibly easy-to-follow guides. It's not just that either, you likely already knew Skillshare for classes on things like photography, editing and illustration, but Skillshare also has hundreds of career-focused classes too. We all know at this stage that traditional jobs aren't one size fits all. I mean, I finished university and came straight into a job at a YouTube channel. That's not necessarily the path that you want to take, but the courses on Skillshare can help you design a career to fit you. There's courses on everything from how to start a business to maximising your workflow or how to grow in e-commerce. Another course that Jack's actually taking to help with the newspaper project. And if you use our link, you can get access to all of that for free. That's right, the first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare.